Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in and finding my channel on the amazing, incredible, wide billion channels that are on YouTube. I appreciate all my viewers and I hope they enjoy joining me as I explore the amazing, phenomenal, unbelievable, interesting wide world of pens. And yes, we have a pen worthy of a turntable, display being held up by a crab, and being observed by Mr. Seismore and Miss Sizemore. They enjoy watching the pen spin, the crab enjoys holding it up, and I enjoy presenting it to you. And it is a beautiful pen. No question about that. It's also well made. It's a good writer. Say no more. It's worth a closer look. So let's see how we can zoom in quite quickly. It's very sensitive. But that engraving just looks great. Done very nicely. And of course, it is the year of the rabbit. And we do have rabbits. So we're going to explore this pen compare it to some other pens, and show you how it writes. Stay tuned. So this pen benefits from a lot of lumens, and I have a lot of lumens, a lot of LED lights that hopefully show off this amazing pen. And there's one of the rabbits. Classic Hong Dion clip, bullet nose, classic design. We go down to the barrel. It's just, I think they did a great job. And there's the second rabbit. And of course, they've identified it, which is very, very good. I appreciate that when the pen is clearly identified. So in the future, if somebody finds this pen, they know what it is. They don't have to guess. The cap comes off in you know, about one and a quarter turns, and we'll see a standard number six nib, but with some unique engraving on it. Yes, we have a rabbit on the nib. Again, another nice touch, another nice detail. Really good tipping on that medium nib. Just your standard plastic fee, but it works very, very well. This section, classic design. It's a classic pen in many, many ways. It feels good in the hand. It's light, but it works well. And you may say, does it post? I'm sorry. With a design like this, there's no way I'm going to post a pen like this. It fits okay in the hand, unposted. And the only thing posting could possibly do, and I'm not saying it will or will not, because there is a liner in the cap, which we'll look at later. But I also like the look of it without the cap on the end of the barrel. That's just me. And that's how I roll. So as we would expect, you unscrew the section. So it has that nice metal insert, which is now showing up on a lot of pens. A nice O-ring there. And a nice branded Hong Dion converter. I like that matte finish on that ring. The ring unscrews. You can easily take it apart to clean it or relubricate it, whatever you want to do. All those little touches make this pen to me to have a long, productive life serving its owner in moving ink from inside to outside and leaking it onto whatever surface they want, a controlled leak, which is the purpose of the fountain pen. What ink to use? Good question. I'm still thinking about it.
So because we have a rabbit pen, I decided that Fox Squirrel was the only appropriate ink to put in there. And yes, I could put a black ink in, but I have enough pens with black ink, so I wanted something a little different. I like this ink, and I think it should work well in that medium nib. Put down some nice ink and get some nice color in the brown family. So I think you realize from Doug's review, this Clearfee nib is a beautiful nib, great to write with. I think it works great with this Birmingham Fox Squirrel ink. Very smooth, lays down a decent amount of ink, no adjustment necessary. It writes great right out of the box, and I enjoy writing with it. And this is not my first calligraphy nib. I had one in the Black 660, and I also enjoyed the way that that one wrote. So they are consistent, good writers. So here's the N23 Rabbit Pen disassembled. We're going to take a look inside cap and barrel and section with the LED light. It's a standard Hong Dion nib assembly. I'm not going to pull the nib. I will flush it, though. Make certain that it's ready to ink up. And as we see, the branded converter easily disassembles. This comes off, and I will remove that ball in there, as I don't think it serves any function. Let's bring in the LED and see what we can see. Now we're in dark mode, and I always feel that the aperture opens up and it shows a little bit different details. We still get some decent reflection. And there's that gray rabbit. If we look inside, we'll see a plastic liner that goes all the way up to the top. There's no legend there like you normally see to uh, seal up against a section, but I expect it'll keep that nib from drying out. If we look at this section, there's a metal insert that makes up those threads, it goes all the way down, and that ring at the end is actually part of it. There might be some pieces assembled. You can see threads in there where the nib assembly screws into. And the barrel, again, is the same type of construction, similar to the cap. But we see metal threads there, which correspond to the metal threads that are on the section. So you got metal on metal. I don't really care one way or the other. But some people just prefer that. But to me, metal on metal can have as much wear and as much tension, torsion, friction as metal on plastic can. And I would put a little silicone grease on those threads anyways, just to ensure they're smooth, continual operation for the long life of the pen. If we look closer in there, we'll see some appears to be brass. So, you know, obviously I think the base of all these pens is a brass tube that's been put into a certain shape and then it's coated and then they use a laser or some type of engraving tool to make those very nice markings on the cap and barrel. So I was very fortunate to be sent this pen by Britton. He sent me a number of pens. I think he's related to Easy Buy and also maybe the LT Hong Dion store that's found on Amazon on AliExpress. You can find the pen on a number of, of selling situations. You can find the pen on, on eBay. Comes in four colors. Price varies based on what nib you have and whether it has a box or not. It only comes in two nibs, an extra fine, which they're saying is 0 0.6, which is a pretty generous extra fine. Generally, extra fines are about 0.3. It also can be purchased on Amazon. And as you can see, the price varies about $6 difference there from the LT Hong Dion store between the extra fine nib and the long knife nib. So the rabbit pen, as I mentioned, classic shape and design. So here it is next to two other Hong Dion pens, which are 660s. Nice tiger wood here and a nice ebony, very dark wood in this version. And this version also has dark trim and a dark nib to go with it. So it's a very good aesthetic design. And again, like I said, classic shape, rounded ends, top and bottom. Same clip on all these pens. And Hong Dion, I think, is great at taking this classic design and just shooting it out of the ballpark, or hitting it out of the ballpark is the more appropriate term, 
and giving us a unique pen to celebrate the year of the rabbit. So here are two pens from Japan that I brought in to look at that classic design. This is a Platinum President. I really like it. It has a coarse nib. And this is a Pilot 74. And again, you can see the similarities in that shape and design because it is classic. And these are classic pens, black and gold. I like the combo. I decided to continue on with my exploration of this classic shape that many, many fountain pens share. So I assembled these. So we have in order the N23 from Hong Dion, a Moon Man, it's labeled Moon Man, or Mahjong, depending upon time of day, P136, which is a great pen, like it. Then the Wingsung 699, it's been around for a while. It's the piston fill version, they also made a vac fill version, same look. And then, then we come to the Asveen P30. So piston filler, piston filler, piston filler. Interesting. And of course, what other pen that represents this incredibly classic shape, but the Jinhao X159, black with silver trim. And then last but not least is a Hong Dion N6 in total black. Is also a piston fill, interesting. So obviously for this pen, they didn't go piston fill, they went cartridge converter. And I think partly the reason is a blind cap here would not add to the look of the pen. I like the way it looks as it is here now. Minimal design, just a very small band there at the bottom of the cap. Here you have those large bands, and this of course is all black, so, but there is a cap band there anyways. So that's my continuing exploration of this bullet-nosed torpedo cigar-shaped, many, many ways of describing it, classic pen shape. So now it's time for the summation, editorial comments. But before we dive in, let's take a look at dimensions. And yes, I do show the cap lightly placed on the back of the barrel, just for those that would like to know what it's like post it. The section is almost perfect size for me. I enjoy writing with it. And of course, the star of this show, besides the amazing engraving on the pen, is the nib. I try to show the nib in various ways. So it's called a long blade, long knife, calligraphy nib, a lot of terminologies. And a lot of Chinese makers have a similar type nib. And I consider the nib a cross between an architect and a zoom nib, kind of like in the Naganati Togi family. So in other words, it's not a completely sharp edge or very fine edge from the top of the nib all the way down through the tipping material. It flares out a little bit, which is similar to what the Naganati Togi style does that Sailor uses. The zoom flares out even more, so that's the difference kind of between those two. But at the end of the day, it's a nice nib. I like the way it puts down that fox squirrel ink. I certainly enjoy it. And it's just a good one and a quarter turns to get off the cap. Feels good in the hand. Looks great in the hand. I mean, come on. Section feels wonderful. That little flare out is very, very nice at the end. So I give this pen a big thumbs up. Highly recommended. Let's do a final writing sample and bid you adieu. So that's my summation. I love it. 
And like I say, the nib just makes it an absolutely joy to use, a pleasure to write with. Hopefully you've enjoyed a look at this pen. I want to thank all of you for watching. This nib encourages flourishes in your writing, at least for me. Hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, putting some ink down, spilling some of that ink on some surface that brings pleasure and a smile to your face. We've reached the end of this video. And yes, for some reason, my handwriting degrades and I guess maybe I'm a little bit tired, but that's the nature of the beast. And we will say bye. As I mix styles, more to come. Stay tuned.